have a duty towards the preservation and the propagation of the message of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Indeed, one of the best ways to work towards the reappearance of Imam al-Mahdi ajalallah ta'ala faraju sharif is through promoting the values of Karbala. Imam Hussein Media Group is the only Shia television network that broadcasts globally in five different languages, Arabic, Farsi, Turkish, Urdu, and English. We are appealing to the lovers of Imam Hussein alayhi salam worldwide to support the channel such that it may continue its global operations. Imam Hussein Media Group is seeking 1,000 partners to pledge to a 14 pound contribution per month. This will allow the channel to sustain its operating costs as we continue to spread the message of Imam Hussein alayhi salam in multiple languages across the globe. You be a part of this great legacy and donate today. You can pledge in two ways. www.imamhussein3.tv slash donate will take you direct to our donation page where you can pledge monthly. Or you can call or WhatsApp us on 00 4-793-991763 Imam Hussain TV, your gateway to Karbala. Thank you, thank you very, very much. Welcome, 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 dear viewers of Imam Hussein TV 3. Welcome to the Late Night Show with myself, Ali Fadl. Now, a Muslim man um, living in the time of the Prophet once insisted upon receiving a special piece of advice from the Holy Prophet. This is how it panned out, okay? The Holy Prophet said to him, I don't mind giving the advice, but do you pledge to act upon it if I do? The man said, certainly Ya Rasulullah, please give me this advice. Now, the Prophet then turned around to him for a second time and said, are you sure you will act on it? The man is slightly confused now. Ya Rasulullah, are you going to give me this advice or, or like, I'm really, I really want some, some, some advice? So, absolutely, uh, O Messenger of, of God, definitely I will act upon it. For a third time, the Prophet then replies to the man, do you promise to act on it? The man said, I promise, Ya Rasulullah, like, please. So the Prophet said to him, look, don't worry, after repeating the question three times intentionally to make him realize the significance of the advice, the Holy Prophet then said to him, look, and this is, this is the seriousness of, of what he's trying to say here. Seriously evaluate the results of your action before performing it. The reason why I'm asking you three times is I want you to seriously evaluate the results of your action before performing it. If its end is good, perform it. If it can lead you to deviation and ruin, then abstain from it. Very, very simple, but so wise. Now, I have the pleasure of welcoming a man who definitely evaluates the results of his actions before performing it, a business coach who went from being an unhappy dentist to closing almost 2.2 million dollars worth of sales in the first I would say 11 12 months of his sales career now I hope he doesn't um, doesn't mind me saying that hopefully he's one of the, of the uh, donators to Imam Hussein TV3 so uh, he has a gift of power speaking with impact enthusiasm and energy meeting the most well-known entrepreneurs of the 21st century and has also met a man called Gabriel Macht Macht marked I don't care how you say it but this guy has met him. We're going to talk about um, Gabriel Macht and who he is. And, if you, and genuinely, if you don't know who this guy is, I don't blame you. But if I say one word, you'll know exactly who I'm talking about. We'll talk about in the show. Now, he, this guy, he's built um, programs for aspiring and ambitious individuals who want to achieve amazing results in their life. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a warm welcome to Dr. Mahmoud Mauji. <laughs> Thank you very, very much. 
Thank you very, very much. The best intro I've ever had. Have you really? Yeah, best intro. Have I've you had, had loads of intros? I've had quite a few. Oh. That was the best. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. I really, really very um, elegantly appreciate done. Appreciate well. that. Uh, thank you very much for, for for coming on the show. Thank you for having really, me. Really, really appreciate it. I know you're you're a busy man, so hopefully we'll use the next hour or so um, to use your time as efficiently as possible. Um, that's why I say in, in the beginning of all my <laughs> all my calls, by the way. So uh, look, look, tell us a bit more about um, Dr. Mahmoud Mahmoud Mauji. Where, where were you born? Where did you where did you grow up? Born here in London, uh, born in South London, okay. and uh, parents emigrated or came here from Uganda when they were thrown out by Idi Amin. Uh, parents came here with hardly anything in their pocket and they had to hustle to build up life. Uh, that said, I was, I was born in South London. We moved here when I was kind of one years old to North mm -hmm. London. North London. And that's, and that's where I've been most of my life. Took some time out to travel up north for uni. Okay. Yeah, but apart from that, I've been here. Nice. And 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 North London is there a, a, like a regular mosque that you that you used to go to? Yes, yeah, so Stanmore. Stanmore mosque. Even now, yeah. Stanmore. Yeah. Nice, nice, nice. We go there every now and then when it comes to um, Muharram. We like their we like okay. their programs up there. You like the tea. Very welcoming people. You like the tea uh, there. I don't like oh, don't tea okay. at all. By the way, there's a uh, people think I'm a weirdo when it comes to food and drink. So. Yeah. Um, chai karak, I think yes. you, guys, that you guys call it. Um, we, I think everyone calls it chai karak, right? right okay. I, again, I don't know because I don't go near it. Okay. Just the smell, I know, just the smell of it yeah. would make me want to. Uh, yeah, but but yeah, the chai karak. People, so, people be turning off right now. I know. <laughs> and I'm really You've turned off the audience. I'm, so far. I'm really, really, really sorry. But if you can try and convince me to get past the first stage of actually. Uh, I could try and close my nose and, and, and drink it, but I, I will never go next to um, to take that. So look. Can you actually drink it? Do you have No, I don't. <laughs> Unless I really don't like it. And I'm forced, and there's a gun to my head, then maybe okay. uh, I'll, I'll, I'll drink chai karak, but I, I can't do it. Look. Okay. Um, so your childhood was, was fairly normal? Yeah. Everything yeah. was alright about it? Normal, normal, yeah. Everything was cool. I had a great childhood. <laughs> was cool. Yeah, just the normal things here and there, yeah. yeah. So apparently, um, did a bit of digging um, on, on, on your life. And, I thought you would. Uh, <laughs> on, the, on your life. <laughs> um, so there was a bit of a, a, bit of a stutter when, when you were young. Yeah. T tell us a bit more about that. I had a stutter from when I was a kid. Uh, it, was, it was horrible in the way like, you know, so whenever you try and speak, the words don't come out. It's like, uh, uh, it's like that. And so it, it's not that bad when, you, when you're around people you know, yeah. but then when you're around a group of people or people you don't know, it just always comes up. And it was horrible. Got teased a lot in school about it, yeah. right? Yeah, it was, yeah it, was, it was a bit nasty. And how, did, how did you kind of get over it? Um, <laughs> you know, like, because uh, in, yeah. the, in the last half an hour, on air and off air, yeah. you haven't started once. No, it's gone, it's oh, gone, it's it gone. Yeah, 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 it's gone. So um, medically, you can't really get rid of a starter. And so even when I was younger, the doctor said, you've had it for two years, you can't get rid of it. And it used to be horrible because you used to go into school and the teachers used to pick on you to read at times, right? And everyone used to laugh and that used to be horrible. No way. Yeah, and I remember one day it just got really bad and I just ran home, ran out of class, went home crying. And I just said to Allah, you know, there's, there has to be a better way than this, right? Really, this isn't... So you didn't believe the doctors? No, I didn't, didn't. Right? Do you know when you're younger, you like, you just have so much faith? Is that, is that you when you were younger? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, lost a bit of the hair, or you, or you yeah. choose. What a hairstyle! <laughs> <laughs> what a hairstyle! I could donate some of the hair. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, <laughs> a Humpty Dumpty. Yeah, this is. Uh, wonder who sent this to you. Uh, I wonder. We'll, we'll talk about who who sent that to to us later on. Okay, so it's, it's interesting because as a, as a young kid, and you touched upon something very very important. I think a lot of a lot of children out there who are watching, um, even when medic, you know, doctors have come and told you, look, you can't do something or this is, this is, you know, this is you for the rest of your life, you still had this, this firm belief that you, could, that you could change your outcome. 100%, 100%. I believe that things are only impossible until someone does them. Then obviously, like so many things, so many examples of everything, right? You know, we can go to the moon, we're now traveling to Mars, right? So how many things, like the four minute mile, everything was impossible until someone did it. Mm. And, and, and when you're younger, you actually really believe in that. And then as you get older, because of what everyone else says to you and, and because of society, that changes. But yeah, your faith is very strong when you're young and I believe that could get rid of it. Okay. Yeah. And, and you took that kind of resilience into your high school, college, college days? Yes and no. Um, like that thing about the starter kind of, I tried to get rid of it, but a bit went, but it just stayed and it was just kind of hovering. Mm. And you know, some crazy things happened in life for it to really go away. Uh, but, but yeah, a, for me, I'm a firm believer in that really, if you put your mind to it, yeah, you can, 
you can probably do anything you want. So I mentioned in my intro that you, you, you closed a certain amount of sales. Uh, I don't know if I got, uh, did I get that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. First 11 so months after I finished dentistry. No, uh -huh. so I was just about to say, yes. so went from dentistry to sales. Yeah, dentistry Tell to sales. Tell us a bit of the dentistry uh, so journey that you took. What, the actual dentistry journey? Yeah, so, so why did it begin? Why dentistry in the first place? So dentistry in the first place. So uh, I entered dental school in uh, 98. Okay, so, and in, when I was getting my, when I was deciding what to do, it Sorry, was like... Wait, wait, it just registered to me. 98. 98. You entered dentistry. Yeah, yeah, so I went to uni in 98. So you don't look, generally don't look a day over 30. Um, Thank you. I might have used that before, but you, mashallah, 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 Muhammad. Wood, if you believe in the whole wood stuff, um, you don't look <laughs> a day over 30, which is fantastic. Mashallah, awesome, man, thank you very much. Health and wellness, right? That, that's what keeps you fit and strong and young? I believe in health and wellness a lot, okay. yeah. So, um, dentistry. Dentistry, yeah. 98, finished in 2003. Dentistry started because uh, back then I wanted something certain, which I know earned a decent amount of money and something kind of quite respectable. Mm -hmm. The title of doctor really did it for me. And so it was either we go into, you know, the normal thing, your doctor, dentist, accountant or failure, right? That's, yeah. that's in our lives, right? <laughs> but saying that, no, 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 in, in all fairness, so, um, yeah. my parents actually told me not to do dentistry. I was just about to say, I mean, yeah, no, no, what they was your parents' Yeah, because my dad was in business and dad said, why don't you take over the business? I'm like, no, I don't do that. I'm going to go into dentistry. He goes, really? People's mouths? I'm like, people's mouths, right? <laughs> and lots of people tried to put me off as well. Dentistry, don't do it. You're not going to like it. I'm like, no, I like it. <laughs> and so, um, yes. Yeah, so I love I, Do you know how many times I've had, I've had like uh, people, uh, guests who have told me about their, their, their journey and their school journeys. And I love the conversations that parents have yeah. with, their, with, their, with their children, especially when it comes to their career choices. So. That's, that's what I'm going to add to my collection as well. Look into people's mouths. Yeah, go cool. Yeah, and uh, yeah, and so it was, I, I didn't want to do medicine because it was like a tough life oh. after uni and you'd have to work nights and things like that. I wanted a family early and things like that and I knew dentists generally make more than medics as well. Mm. And a lot of my choices back then were driven uh, financially. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and so, as you do, you're what, yeah. 18, 19 year old guy yep. who's going yeah. into a career, of course. So that's, yes, yeah, so that's how dentistry happened. Fantastic. And we're not going to talk about post-dentistry because cool. when did you feel like dentistry is just not for me? Then about eight years after I, after I graduated, the first eight years were great. So I was doing everything. I was, you know, the best at what I could be, pushing hard, great practices. I was teaching. I had some great clientele. And then, yeah, about after eight years, like, marriage starts going, well, it's about eight years, right? So career <laughs> starts happening eight years on, as well. So, yeah. <laughs> So it was, yeah, it was about eight years. A rocky, a, rock, a rocky patch after eight years, we hit it with dentistry. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm joking yeah. about the that was stuff. amazing. That was just beautiful. Um, not that I can relate to it. I'm, oh, I'm yeah. still, wait, I should know this. Totally 15, happily. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 20. Seven, seven years. Uh, I'm seven years. So next year, I'll be. I had to count. I had to count, yeah. I hope your wife's not watching. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. Um, uh, yeah, fine. Okay, brilliant. So, 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 you mentioned family. So, you had a, you had a family as well. You had, you had kids whilst that. Yeah. So, dentistry. so I got married in in uh, in two thousand. Yeah, in in the year two thousand. Well, hold on. so nineteen ninety eight, you, yeah. you started uni. Yep. One year, two years later, you got married. Yeah. So, uh, first year in the summer holidays. Yeah, got married. Oh wow! So, so, so you're married as well as. Uh, as well as uni at the same time, you studied? Mar yeah, m married while in uni first. So then she was five years for one of them. I was engaged in the other four. We were married and then we were living up in Manchester together. Oh, that's cool. brilliant. Yeah. H how, d how did that work with the background you're, you're from? Like, I know that you guys have to finish career, uh, have a house, have a car. Blah, six blah, figures blah, blah, in the bank. Six figures in the bank, the whole, stuff, the whole right? spiel, yeah. right? How, how did that work <laughs> out? <laughs> so um, we met quite early on. So we met in high school. Okay. Yeah, and uh, obviously I just went and told the family on when to get married, and they said, "Yeah, get married. Right? You have no money, you have no house, you have no career, but just, just get married." And it was like, "Great!" And so we got married. <laughs> it, it, well, I'm it's sure it was. It was, it was, it was as easy no, as it that. Was, it was, it was, honestly. Oh, really? No. <laughs> not at all. Not at all. <laughs> but that's a comfort. My mother-in-law might be watching. She'll kill me. I'm sorry, yeah. Auntie. He's an amazing. Well, I'm sure that you've you've shown that you're an amazing yeah, yeah, person yeah, yeah, now. Yeah, so it was yeah. a good decision. We started getting on now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cause so, so what was it like to have a have a baby whilst at uni? Because so, yeah. I, I, I can't relate to that because I, alhamdulillah, had kids after I went uni and after, after my missus went uni as well. But 
I can imagine that was quite quite stressful, no? Not really. So Oasis, my oldest, he was born um, two months before my finals. Okay. And it was just it was it was nice because what it was is like when I started uni and I was engaged, all my friends went to me, you serious? Coming to uni, you're engaged? What yeah. the hell are you here for, right? Yeah. But then on graduation day, they were like, wow, right? We just got through our degree, we got through a degree and you got a family and you got a kid. Masha and Allah. so Oasis was there for all the graduation photos. And Masha Allah. So he was in all the photos, that was really nice, yeah. That's amazing, yeah, so that, that is amazing. Cool. Well look, beautiful introduction. I'm sure there's a lot more to, to find out about Dr. Mahmoud Mauji. Um, and especially since, I really want to know more about this whole closing the, 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 the sales thing. Cool. Um, we'll talk about that definitely. After a small, small break, please don't go anywhere. We'll be back in the next uh, couple of minutes. But from me and the team here at Imam Hussein TV, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Now, a lot goes into producing the shows that you love here on Imam Hussein TV. It may be half an hour for you, but it's hours for us. We have many factors to consider when producing our shows. Time, cost, set design, sourcing speakers and guests. It takes us about an hour to film, three hours to edit, two hours to render and you well you watch it in 30 to 40 minutes hours just for 30 minutes what is the i am husseini show well it's a show that provides you the dear viewers a gateway a window a pathway whatever you want to call it to visit Imam Al Hussein alayhi salam and Abu Al Fadl Al Abbas alayhi salam at the comfort of your own home. I am a host at Ahkam SOS. It is a show which entails with people sending in the Ahkam questions, which me and Sheikh Ali Maash discuss and give them their answers. My show is Her Thoughts, which is a show featuring a rotating panel of female presenters discussing a range of topics from a female perspective. Verses of Love aims to be the post majlis majlis. It tries to bring the community together to continue engaging with the Masaib of Ahlul Bayt I've had the honor of working and directing and producing documentaries for the Imam Hussein TV3 channel. So the Late Night Show is essentially it's a talk show. I had guests all the way from self-development experts, media experts, sales directors. My show, Live in London, it needs no introduction with world-renowned scholar, Dr. Sayyid Amar Nakshwani. Sometimes it's difficult for us to do the research. It takes us sometimes a week, two weeks to find answers for certain questions. Sometimes the questions don't even get answered and we have to roll them on until next week. But I guess this is a problem that is actually, you know, a good headache and worth having. One of the main difficulties which we come across is um, getting female participants to participate on the show. After the show, when we get the emails coming through from the women um, in our society, in our community, and it really shows us that women relate more to a female speaker. Among some of the difficulties I'd say is the late nights with a pretty hectic schedule for all the reciters who have probably come from one or two majalis beforehand. Sometimes you just have this magical moment where the reciter says a line that connects and lets you release all of that emotion, which helps you connect with Aba Abdullah and therefore with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I filmed these documentaries during COVID. That always stays with me because I think that was a difficulty that I thought I will face. Yet I think Imam Al-Hussein sallallahu alayhi opened so many doors and made everything so easy for me. How much can we laugh and joke on an Islamic channel? Especially when the channel is associated to Imam Hussain alayhi salam. But the best part of the show is actually, it's the fun part of it. So that's, that's the games. The best thing about this show, you can actually speak and discuss and actually voice their opinions and questions to Dr. Sayyid Amar Nakshwani. We've come so far, yet still have so much more to achieve. Support us so that we can support your children in bringing them more knowledge and content. Because Imam Hussain TV is your gateway to Karbala. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته
Welcome back here viewers of Imam Hussein TV3. You are watching The Late Night Show with myself, Ali Father. Tonight I have a very fascinating guest uh, because he has made some very interesting career choices um, and he is pretty much a life coach, um, entrepreneurial, business, talks about many, many different things to make sure that you as the listener are able to achieve some great results in your life. And that's what it's all about, right? Reaching our potential, reaching um, what we can can do. Uh, Mahmoud Mawji, Dr. Mahmoud Mawji is uh, with me Thank on the uh, on the, on my hot seat. So, Hajj Mahmoud, been to Hajj? Uh, yes. Alhamdulillah. Yes. Okay, so I can say Hajj Mahmoud. You can. Right, cool. But you don't mind me not using no, doctor. No. That's uh, okay. Cool. Out, that was one of the, that was one of the the the. You, you did mention that was one of the motivated motivations. It was, yeah. It was the beginning, yeah. Cool. And if someone didn't say... It was doctor, nice to get the credit card with doctor. <laughs> <Does, laughs> so if someone doesn't say... Because I've met some dentists who are like, well, I'm a doctor as well. Cause just, yeah. Because I don't know, there's this thing where people don't actually recognise uh, dentists as doctors, right. but they actually are. Um, and so you don't get funny about people not calling you. No. Cool. Hajj Mahmoud, um, we're going to have a quick game. Cool. Our guests, or the guests before you, um, have taken part in this game. And okay. the whole idea behind this is called... Guess, not guess, it's called... Heads up. Yeah. Thanks to my lovely uh, producer over there. I love him. Uh, it's called Heads Up. And essentially right. the way this works is that there is going to be a list of occupations. Okay. Okay. Now I'm going to tilt this here like this. Ah, mm -hmm. I don't want to stop. No, no, don't stop. Okay. Let me turn it off and then put it back on. Basically the way this works is you have to describe to me. Right what occupation is on the screen okay. without saying the actual occupation. Cool. And then I have to guess it, okay? okay. Motivate had seven correct answers as okay. in he described and I and I guessed. Um, seven answers. So you're trying to get seven or above. Okay, okay? seven or above. You've got 60 seconds. Your time starts now. S if you don't know it, pass. Pass. Wood, um, chipping wood. Um, something hammer. A no. carpenter. A carpenter. Yeah, Sorry, my God. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, Steve Jobs. IT. Uh, mm. Apple. Mm. Computer scientist. Doing. Uh, CEO. Einstein. Uh, no, gravity theory. Pass. This is going to be really bad. Scientist. Pass. pass, pass, pass. Okay. James Bond. An agent. Double agent. Yeah, but he's a. He's a spy. Yes. Yeah. There we go, that's one. You? 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 He's your? My producer. Yes! Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, Muhammad Ali. Boxer. Matas yes, cool. Uh, needles everywhere. Acupuncture. Yes! I'll take that. Okay. Um, kid doctor. A doctor for kids. For kids. I don't know this Come one. On. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> We're going to get that. It's past. <laughs> Respectable. It was a respectable. Was moment. it? No, was no, it? yeah, honestly, because somewhere before you had three. Uh, we started slow. Yeah, we did start slow, but that was that was a cobbler. A cobbler. cobbler. What is a cobbler? The guy does stones. Like, is that a cobbler? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is, yeah, is yeah, that a cobbler? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I've got the video of it as well. That's gonna be amazing. Look. <laughs> I'm gonna say, I'll save this to you actually. I'm gonna save this video. How do I save this video? Late night show. I don't. You have to have the paid version to save it. Oh, is it? I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> Everything is free from there these days. You never take anything. Okay, cool. Well, I'm sorry. I'm sending something now, uh, but I need to know the results. Uh, it won't let me go to the results. Is it? F it's four correct answers, which is good. Four, which puts okay. you so far second in the league table. Okay. Um, I'm not sure if this is going to send or not, and I don't want to have it on some side. Cool. Um, I guess the lowest is three. Where, like. Oh, okay. So it's my turn. <coughs> so now we're going to flip the oh, cool. flip the switch and. Um, Flip the rolls here. I'm going to need to cancel this. Forget this. Sorry, it's just going to be all over the place. Um, swipe up to play again. As soon as I do this, we're going to... So, up for pass. Up for pass. And then down for correct. Okay. Oh, wait. One second. Okay. Uh, a guy who uh, does money for businesses. Uh, he deals with their finances. Um, accountant? Yes. There you go. Uh, a person who in primary school and high school, they do something... Teach. For, teach, teacher, yeah. Oh, that. Um, our our uh, person, uh, a Sayyid, a Sayyid and a Sheikh, they are... S a speaker, no, teacher, no, no, um, S uh, preacher. No, keep going. Priest. No. <laughs> um, they are, when they're learned, they are a... 
Sheikh. No, another they, one. They are. Uh, They're also professors as well. Okay. Should, yeah. should we pass it? Pass it, pass it, pass it. Just pass it. Keep going. Like, you have to pre. Yeah. Okay. Oh, do you know those double decker buses, but they don't have the top and yeah. they take you through London? Yes. Tour guide. Yes. Tour. Yeah. Uh, pass that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Oh, pass that. <laughs> Pass that. <laughs> a person that deals with really sm nice smelling things, bunch of. Oh god, that was hard. Who was that? These are really hard. There was florist. Okay. There was. Um, what was the preacher one? Scholar. Scholar. <laughs> Scholar. <laughs> yeah. What is it? What is it? I don't want to. Oh, you got the video. six. Yeah. Okay. I got three. So we had a tour guide. You got okay. the tour guide, right? We got Land the tour guide. Landscaper. Landscape. How am I gonna? I, I don't know how to describe that. Mortician, sportscaster. I got really hard ones. I'm not gonna lie. So three. Mortician. Is that the one you just said pass? I said pass for three okay. of them. Right. Three of them. Uh, okay. So that was quite a good um, fun and games. Um, All seven. Good. Well, seven is still the the uh, the, the 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 record okay. um, with Mr. Motivate. Um, and and well, if you're here another time in the second series, maybe. We'll, um, Try and up it from four till. Will they let seven. you have a second cool. series? So, are they um, going to let you have a second series? Oh, we are going to have a second series. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah we're going to have a second series, inshallah. Bigger and better. Well, we're thinking <laughs> about it. The producer's like, I'm, I'm not doing a second series, but I want to do a second series, but we'll see. Um, cool. So, you know, you, you, you loved, before the break, we're talking just a bit about dentistry and it went well, served its purpose. Served its purpose. Right? Yeah. But then, kind of things didn't, didn't really go, go, to, go to plan, or what happened after that? Why, why did you kind of fall out of love? So um, I get bored with things very, very, very quickly. Mm. And for me, it's like for the first seven years, I was, I was pushing hard. I wanted to be the best. So I was teaching, going on courses, and I just knew I was doing very, very, very well. Then I just started getting bored. I, it was just, I realized there's something more to me than this, but I had no idea what it is. And it was so frustrating. You know when like, there's something, you don't know what it is? Yeah. And it just took me on a path where I just didn't want to be, like I just wasn't being great anymore at this. And so for me, it was like, I just don't want to settle at average. I just couldn't, it's just not me. And because of that, I just started disliking it. But I didn't know what else there was for me out there. Okay. And that was it, and it was just a frustrating X amount of years. Tried so many things, like so many businesses, so many things I've tried, just nothing, nothing oh, really. So you tried to start up new businesses yeah, whilst you were? Yeah, yeah, loads right. of things. I, so I, used to, I used to trade a lot, that was cool. And then, uh, then I had a recruitment company. On top of that, then I had an affiliate marketing company. And then I used to have a uh, um, social media agency. Tried loads of things. Really? And they started and I got bored of them very, very, very quickly. Nothing really stuck. Mm. It was like, you know, most people said to me, you know, between the age of 40 and 60, that's going to be like your peak. And I'm like, flipping, I don't like what I do. Yeah. Like, how is this going to be my peak? How is it going to work? So yeah, it's an internal battle going on. Really? Yeah. And so when, when did you leave? Or I left, kind of left, so I officially left in 2018, the day before Ashura. Yeah, 2018 was my last practicing day as a dentist. Where did, yeah. what did you move into? So what happened is, um, it was kind of a transition, so... Um, oh, so it wasn't just a sudden, I'm going to do this now? It was no, a no, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, so transition. Uh, let's, let's rewind a bit, and, and so you, you, you had to go at three or four, five or six different things, yeah. and none of them still fulfilled what you were looking for. Exactly. Um, Talk to us a bit about the sales because uh, again, m s people's motivation sometimes is money, and and but money wasn't an issue for you. Alhamdulillah, it was it was more of a, a, a satisfaction. Well, you know, dentistry paid the bills. Paid That's the what bills. it did, right? It was okay. just like you know, it paid the bills. That was it. Okay. No more. Than but there was more that that you you knew you could achieve. Yeah, yeah, okay. like, he yeah. So much more in your team, but I just didn't know what it was. I just, and it's like, there's so many people I meet right now in that position where they just, they, they just want to do something, but they just don't know what it is. Yeah. And they're just frustrated. And it's a horrible place to be because you don't know what to do. So and how, it's like, how did you set out the plan then? So what happened is um, in 2016, yeah. I lost the business I had, a, a practice I had in that, and I lost about half a million pounds in that. Wow. Okay, and for me that was like, I was gonna sell that business that year and that was gonna be my pension pot. I'm thinking about a pension already then, right? That's how bad it was. It's like, okay, fine, that was gonna be a pension pot. And so for me back then, that was a lot of money. It was like, and then things kind of got really bad after that. And when I lost that, what happened is, you know, my dad gave me some advice and I started running every day. It was like, I realized that all the uber successful people, they've got something in their life they do all the time. Mm. And this morning time health related, so I started running. I didn't like running, but I started doing it every day. A few months later, my father passed away. And when my father passed away, it was a running which helped me get over his death. Right? 
But the thing is, when dad died, he was happy. He did everything he wanted to, and I was so upset. Mm. Upset in the way that I was unhappy with my life. Like, I, it got to the point where I used to go into my clinic crying. Wow. I hated it that much. I was very good, alhamdulillah, you know, Allah has gifted me with uh, a very good pair of hands. I was very skilled at what I did. Treat people very well, did some really good treatment, but it was just, it was horrible, and I didn't know what to do. So 2016 was quite a difficult year for you? It was probably the most amazing year and the most difficult year combined in one. Why? Because yeah. when dad passed away, that was kind of, you know, like sometimes, like we wait till the worst time of our life before we take action. That was the worst time of my life. Mm. And that was it, and that's the day I took action. And I, I know that was the spark, but what, what were the actions that you took straight after it, away from running? And the, like, the action I took is, I remember that, like I was, um, I didn't know what to do, right? And it's like, you know, where do I go from here? I want to build up some sort of legacy. I want to do something, and, I, and it's not teeth. And I remember seeing this, um, this quote by Gandhi, and it said that you'll find yourself when you lose yourself in the service of others. Mm. And I was like, you know, what can I help people with? Because up till then, everything was about me, just me and my family, that was, everything was about that. And I said, the one thing I'm great at is running, because that's what I do every day. Okay. So what if I could teach people how to do that? As simple as that, what if I could teach people how to do that? So I started up a fitness class in Stanmore, right? And then that in was mosque. in mosque, okay. yes. Okay, started a fitness class. They don't want 15 people. People said, "You won't get 15 kojas. They don't want. They don't. Help, they don't like health." <laughs> yeah. Run. I'm like, cool. Yeah. I'm like, we'll find them, right? And you know, I had this thing where I said, well, maybe you know, maybe I can't change the world through one person, but I could change the world for one person. So if one person came along, that'd have been enough. But we got 15 people pretty quickly. And what I realized is that if you want to become great at something, you have got to go to the darkest parts of your life. For me, the darkest part of my life was speaking because I couldn't speak. Because mm. like, I, I, I had this stutter. So I used that So you platform. still had that, had yeah. a, a mild form of this stutter? It wasn't mild, it was heavy. Oh, it was still heavy? It was heavy, oh, wow. yeah, it was heavy. And so then in, in 2016, when I launched this fitness class, every week I used to give him a talk. And that's what got me over my start. So I put myself in a position and I, I just knew that I have to give him a talk. I used to spend eight hours on a Saturday doing, pre preparing for a 10 minute Sunday talk. And I did that for one whole year, every, every single week. And then on Sunday, I used to go in and I used to give him a pump talk. And that's what helped me get over my stutter. It what was, was talks about? It was, it was a pump talk. It was, was a it? pump, pump motivation oh, talk before wow, I got them wow, fit. Wow, wow, wow. Yeah. Okay, okay. And then I recorded them, I put them on YouTube, on Instagram, on Facebook, and people started watching them. They started calling me to speak on their stages. And I was like, wow. And that's kind of where life changed from. And there was no, there was no thought behind it. There was no goal set out. There's nothing. It was just like, you know, that's how things that's how things fell in place. Yeah. So we have a we have a video um, of of you. We've, again, we've we've done some digging. Um. You know, I've been very blessed this year that I've travelled around the world quite a lot, speaking on health and wellness, and I've met people who I never thought I would meet. And the biggest thing that I come back with is gratitude. That I'm so thankful in my life for what I have because I've seen what other people don't have. And it's the same as each and every one of you here, that each and every one of you here need to be so grateful for what you have in your life. Because you know, sometimes when you're in it, you can't see it. We're so blessed to be in a country, we're so blessed to be in a time when we can make health our number one priority. And why do I say that? Because there's someone just like you on the other side of the world. There's a man just like you with a spouse just like you, with kids just like yours. But his priorities in health, his priorities how to avoid being blown up with bombs going around him. His priorities how to put food in his children's mouth so he can see them for another day. His priority is how he can see his kids and family for one more day. He doesn't understand our problems. Our problems to him is his greatest gift. And that's what this year needs to be about. It needs to be about understanding what we have, about pure gratitude, because I'm sure Allah whispers up there that if you're not thankful for what I give you, why would I give you more? Yeah, that was actually a talk we did on, uh, uh, on one episode. The group we put together for that fitness class, once a year we had an iftar together and then so I used to give the talk so they used to invite me for the talk Fantastic. at the iftar, yeah, so that was and that. So, so you knew you, now you had a passion for speaking. Um, yeah. How comes you didn't move into kind of more the Islamic speaking? So, it is, but it's from a different point of view. I'm not the guy to sit up there on the pulpit and speak. For me, that's not what it's about. 
But I think Islam is all about life, like everything is Islam. And I wanted to bring Islam in a way to people which isn't the normal way, but which is in a different way. But like, you know, when you look at our religion, what, it's a, what is the essence of religion? It's to be the best person you can, right? Mm. That's it. Best person you can. And that was my message. And so in your talks, do you also implement kind of Islamic teachings? Yeah, 100%. Or you just 100%. Depends on what crowd I'm in. Okay. Depends on what crowd I'm in. Yeah, of course. So okay, so so you've got this passion for 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 speaking. Um, how did that then come come to life? In because you can't obviously make money just just from either speaking or coaching, or can you? Well, you can, but I didn't know how to. That's the thing. Yeah. yeah okay. So people started inviting me on their stages to speak, and then what I realized is that um, I need to get, I need to find a way to monetize the speaking. So few things happened, but in the end, what I started doing is I started working for other companies and I was a shotgun speaker. So I used to go in and I used to uh, give h half a day talk. And then at the end of the talk, they used to, I, I used to sell them something. So like if it was, uh, you know, if it's a property talk or w whatever it may be, right? So I used to be the guy who used to speak and then make the sale after. So I started working for, uh, for quite a few companies like that. I, I became the best closer. That's where the thing about um, Harvey Specter, Gabriel came in. Okay, yeah. so, so tell, yeah. tell us a bit about, so, about that then. Yeah, so um, I started... Sorry, I came to life when you said yeah. Gabriel, Gabriel, yeah, yeah. Mack, so, Harvey Specter, yeah. Yeah, so cool. I started closing for these companies and then, alhamdulillah, I became the best closer. There and, he is. Yeah, there, there he is. <laughs> there he is, But guys, whoever didn't know who Gabriel Mack... Mack? Mack. Mack. Um, Mack is, I can't even pronounce his name, but I love him anyway. Um, he, he's from Suits, you probably knew that already. Um, and, and yeah, that was Gabriel. So who, b before we move on, yeah. any other famous people that you've met? So yeah, so um, I've shared the stage with people like Steve Wozniak, co-founder of Apple. Okay. Yeah, Mel Gibson. Okay. Uh, and quite a few others, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Mel there. Yeah, Mel Did Gibson. you get any, uh, this is just, just a photo, did you actually speak to them? No, no, like that? no, I actually spoke on stage alongside you them. Yeah, yeah. <gasps> yeah, so we spoke at the same event. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, this guy yeah. from... Charlie Sheen. Yeah, yeah, I know, yeah. I know. Um, I probably shouldn't say the, the programme on the uh, on, on the <laughs> same TV. <laughs> yeah, anyway. probably not. Yeah. <laughs> probably not, yeah. Steve Wozniak. Really wow. Such great stories he gave about how him and Steve Jobs started Apple. Some <laughs> phenomenal <laughs> stories. Yeah. So, okay, so now... now all right, cool. So, so, so it started to get wheels now. Yes. And yeah, okay, so um, everything started moving. People started inviting me on their stage to speak. It was like, great, but now we need to monetize this. We need yeah. to, I need to be able to get out of dentistry, but how do I do it? I need to be able to earn enough to look after my family. Oh, so you're still doing dentistry at the yeah. same time? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So I was doing like, you know, I was, I was split testing my life. Yeah. I had this, like, I was in my practice for three days a week, and the other four days a week I was living this life I loved. And so it was like three and four, three and four, and then it came to the point where I had to let go. A few instances came in my life when I realized that it, 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 it's actually, it was killing me now doing mm. what I was doing and I had to get out, but I needed to be able to earn from it. Okay. So I started working for these companies and so I started earning that way. Charities started inviting me on their stage to be able to speak and because they knew that, you know, one of my gifts I believe is, uh, is actually storytelling. Okay. So by telling stories from stage, I used to raise a lot of money. I used to close a lot for companies and for the charities. So I saw that, yeah, there's potential here, but I just didn't know how to harness it. From when I was younger, I loved helping people. I loved giving advice, but I thought, what if I could kind of make this work? And it was actually, when I was at that, uh, when I was at that uh, business event with Harvey Specter, um, so in the audience, I've, I realized that there was a coach in the audience and that coach was charging people a million euros to coach them. Yeah. And for me, I started coaching them, but I was charging like a couple of grand or something, right? So it was nothing. And I realized that I need to be around this guy. If okay. someone can charge a million, right? How, the, how do you do that? How do you command that much? Yeah. Right? So long story short, he started coaching me. I didn't pay him a million, but you know, he, I, I came in another circle he <laughs> I had. I hope not. Right? It's a big story. I, I, you know, I ended up meeting him. He came to London, he met me. And then um, I, I said, I need someone like you around me in my life. And he goes to me, well, well, then join the circle. I said, look, I don't have that kind of money at all. He said, okay, fine. And then he said, look, well, I've got another circle which you can join. You see me four times in a year. And he gave me the price of that and that blew my mind. Right? If that's a million, yeah. imagine how much this was, right? It was a crazy amount of money. I said, no, I can't do that. I said, I'm going to leave my practice. I've got one year to live financially and I can't pay you that level of money. And he said, well, you're just going to walk out of here. I said, what do you want me to do? He said, what, you're willing to give up the life you want? I said, but I don't even know where this is going. And and I said to him, look, maybe there's a way I can pay you. Yeah. And I said, you know, all the money my dad left me is the exact money you're asking me for. And you know, he looked at me and you know, like I always say that life is in linear. Yeah. 
you could learn in one moment or it takes someone 10 years to learn, right? And at that moment, he looked at me and goes, you know, Mahmoud, you're so attached to money. And I was like, you got a point. Mm. He said, money's too valuable to you and you'll never let go of it. Your money's your money, your dad's your dad, you've put them together and you'll never grow. And in that moment, I knew that this guy saw something in me which no one else could see. And I trusted him and he took me on a journey and that changed my life completely. He, you know, sometimes in life you need other people to see what you can't see. Yeah, yeah when you're in the forest, you, all you can see is the trees, right? You yeah. can't see out of there. You need someone up there in a helicopter to show you the way. He, yeah, he was a person. And I realized being around people like that allowed me to get to the level I needed to be, to be able to command, you know, the fees which I wanted to command. Because I truly believe that when someone pays, they pay attention, yeah. right? And it's like, you know, I want to work with the best people. I want to get the best results. So how do I get myself there? And then that was the journey I went on. Yeah. And it was crazy. It was, it was, it was like a roller coaster ride. And is that, is that how Reignite came to life? Yeah, yeah. So, um, so, a bit about Reignite. Yeah, so I started uh, coaching. The coaching firm built up. You know, we started hitting multiple six figures very quickly. Um, that things started going well. But then I realized and people wanted to invest in the company. And I was like, no. But it was me. It was like Mahmoud Mauji. And I realized early on that it's not sellable one day. Right, so Reignite was the name where the business now runs because that, that, that's a brand of its own. Mm. And you can sell the brand, but not the name. Yeah, yeah, one day, one day, if whatever, when that time comes, yeah. But that's the way Reignite came. And then we hit lockdown and that gave us our own problems. But Alhamdulillah, lockdown was a big gift. It allowed us to grow so much. Yeah, uh, yeah allowed us to grow globally online, build an academy. And so we can just serve so many more people as, you know, than, than we could. And yeah, and we are where we are here now. Fantastic. Honestly, that's such an inspiration because uh, and I'm sure for the viewers as well, like sometimes, you know, it could be not every single viewer out there, but there are probably viewers out there thinking, look, I I'm at a crossroads in my life and, you know, I need to make some decisions. But I think just one last thing before we, before we take the break, um, what practical steps do you think we can take when you are at that crossroads? What practical steps do you think we could take? Not, not, not in the sense that, you know, I want to do this, I want to do this, but what physical, real life, decisions can I take in order to know, you won't really know until you're, until you're there, but yeah, what, what, what practical steps can you take in order for you to say, this is, the, this is where I want to go? That's a beautiful question, right? The one thing I'd ask, the one thing I'd say, ask yourself, are you happy? Simple question, are you happy? Uh, and say I'm not. But then? Say I'm not. Then, then are you willing to do something about it? Some people are happy being unhappy, right? You, you know people like that. They're just happy complainers. They'll complain, but they don't do anything about it. Yeah. Right? But there are some people who they really need to do something about it. So you ask yourself the question, and then you're willing to do something about it. And if you are, then it's a journey. Right? Then, it's a, then it's a journey you go on. But some mm -hmm. people are happy being unhappy, and that's okay as well. I wasn't, no way. Like, I wanted to be remembered when I go, and, and, and I want that, and I'm happy to say that. And I don't want people to forget me. And I want to leave my mark. And that drives me every single day. And mm -hmm. how many, like I've put a video out on YouTube saying my goal is to be a billionaire. It's not to make a billion pounds, it's to, it's to touch a billion lives. Mm -hmm. For me, that's very important. And everything I do every day, my mission statement is governed by that. Is to is change that what your why is? But yeah, it's to change I don't want to get lives. into that because I think sometimes it's a bit too yeah. personal. No, but. that's cool. It's, it's to touch a billion lives. Yeah. Fantastic conversation, honestly, and I, and I can't wait to come back after the break to know a bit more about uh, Mahmoud Mauji's, Mahmoud, Mahmoud Mauji's um, inspirational journey, um, which I'm learning a lot. I don't know about you guys, I'm sure that you will, and um, we will see you literally in a couple of minutes. Water is the key to life, yet millions have no access to this basic human necessity. Imam Hussein Charity is building water wells in Pakistan. Help the survival of many who can't have this basic human right. Those who are at risk of disease and even worse, death. Imam Hussein Charity has a six month guarantee of completion of each water well project. Help transform the lives of the believers who live without water. Donate today. Welcome 
back here, viewers of Imam Hussein TV 3. You are watching The Late Night Show with myself, uh, Ali Fadl. Tonight and today, I have a very special guest who's actually got me thinking and re-evaluating life. That's how um, impactful he has been uh, over the last um, couple of minutes or, or, or so. Even off air, we were talking about some serious conversations and, and I'm going to have a roadmap of changing my life after the show. <laughs> That's how serious it is. But anyway, no, no, we've had, to, we've had a very interesting discussion with um, Haj Doctor, uh, Dr. Mahmoud Mauji. Um, and now we're going to have a bit of fun. Um, and so as you can see, ladies and gentlemen, he is blindfolded um, only because he, the aim of the game is to guess the taste or you're going to taste and you have to guess the contents of what you are tasting. Very, very simple, um, but we'll see how it goes. And we've also spoken about uh, Haj Mahmoud first and foremost. Are you okay? Everything all right? I am okay. Yeah? Uh, yeah. Good. Good, good. All right, cool. So we're talking about some allergies. And alhamdulillah, he has zero allergies to any food or drink. Um, so we are safe from a, <laughs> from a health and, uh, and safety perspective. You've consented. Ladies and gentlemen. So the first food to come out. <laughs> You're laughing already. And you, can, you can see it. <laughs> oh my god. Um, this is the first thing to come out. I need to help you with this as well. So let me move your Okay, so I'm gonna I need to refill your water as well. Is it that um, bad? You're gonna need Please to don't do it. spices. Mm. I hate No 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 this okay. is this is, you, you hate spices. <laughs> How do you got to stand there for thirty years of your life? They don't put spice in their food. They don't? No. Oh, it must be mild. I don't eat much of the food but I can't oh, do spice. Okay. So like is there spice? There? No no no, I don't think there is. No, there shouldn't be any spice. So the first food um, we can see uh, is I actually don't know. Ah, this is a. Okay, cool. I know what this is. Let me help you with this one. Um, so what do you want me to do? Me yeah, to yeah. Do? I'm gonna I'm gonna give you the spoon. All right. Okay. Um, and just be careful. Eh, it'd be all right. Careful okay. of what? I can't nothing, see. Nothing, nothing. Okay. I can't you, see. Okay. Be careful. Your hand, put, put your right hand towards me, towards the sound of my voice. Okay, cool. There, there you go. Yeah. And now just take that and very gently put it in your. No, no, other side, other side. Okay, sorry, I got this wrong. <laughs> Is, am I the first person you're doing this? <laughs> yeah, we are. This is definitely a test. Okay, let's do that again. There we go. All right, perfect. Now you can put that straight. <laughs> <laughs> You've never it's, done this. It's before. not that bad. Trust me, it's not that bad. It's not that bad. Uh, just, just uh, a little bit of it. Uh, well, it's not really a little bit of it though. We'll, uh, we'll just try it. Try it. Try it. Keep, keep going. A bit more. A bit more. A bit more. <laughs> <laughs> It's like an olive or something. Oh, oh, you have to guess what it is. Taste oh. it. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's an olive. It's yeah. not an olive. Okay. Vinegar, you, you, you're on the right track. Okay. Keep going. Okay. Um, not olive. It's full of vinegar. Oh. It's a pickled something. Okay. I have no idea what to call it, but... Serious? Seriously. Okay, cool. It's a pickled onion. It's a pickled onion? <laughs> pickled onion. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we can, we, we'll show it to you later on. Just drop the, the, the spoon. Yeah, there we go. And leave the okay. spoon there. All right, fantastic. So that was oh. the first one you got wrong. Um, okay, now we're going to go for the second one. Oh my Lord, what is that? Oh my God, that is bad. Okay, this one's not that bad, but the one I just seen underneath is horrible. Yeah, that's horrible. I'm sorry. This is not my choice. Okay, second. I think it's time we took the blindfold off. Okay, I think right it's time hand, I ran out of it. Right, right hand. Um, okay, now, now put your hand down as if you're grabbing something from a plate. It, okay, take the plate, take, some, take one of the contents of what it is. Yeah, yeah, just take that. What do you think it is so far? Crisp. It's, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's a papadum crisp, right? Do you want me to taste it? It's a papadum crisp. Okay, yeah, you can taste it if you want. No, do, no, I, I, do I need to taste it? Well, yeah. <laughs> you need to guess what it is. It's not <laughs> <laughs> I should have started with this one. This is quite tasty. <laughs> yeah, this is actually not too bad. What is it? It doesn't taste of anything. It doesn't taste of anything, does <laughs> it? It's just a problem, Chris, right? It's a, a, a prawn cracker. Can you taste the prawn there now? No? Can't taste the prawn. Can't taste the prawn. Okay, <laughs> so that's that's two. If you give me that, <laughs> number three. Is this the last one? No. Okay. No. Okay. So no. there's more. Number three. Your taste buds are totally messed up now. No wonder I didn't taste the prawn because ah, I'm picking on here's the before. water then to neutralize it. There you go. Are you sure this water? Yeah. <laughs> 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 All right. Okay. 
I got you. I got you. There we go. Uh, uh -huh. Got it. Yeah, okay. Yeah. This third one. I can I'm still gonna, taste um, the pickle. Okay. Onion. So this is this is part of a a, a lot of a lot of um, of it on the plate. So I'm going to take a spoonful of this thing. Oh God. All right. Um, and you, yeah. So what do you mean to do? Oh. Okay. Cool. Um, Everyone's laughing outside, so yeah, this is something are. not very good. Yeah, okay, cool. Okay. I'm going to have to, the, the, the producers are telling me to feed you, so, okay. But no, actually, you no, no, don't, let's not do that. No, let's not do yeah, that. Yeah, let's not do that, because I might get it all over the place. Um, your finger, your, your hand again. Okay. Uh, I would put your other hand underneath. Oh, yeah, it? just in case. Is yeah, 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 like that, just like that. All right. Is Perfect. it messy? Perfect. It's I'm not messy, but it could be. You'll <laughs> 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 be surprised. <laughs> I'm not going to do this. <laughs> hold on, hold on. It's, it's yeah. something sweet. It is sweet, yeah. Sweet. yeah it's sweet. Okay. It's sweet. It, the texture is really weird. The texture is really weird, but... It's actually not too bad. It's, it's not too bad, huh? No, it's Have you had something, something like sweet. this before? It's, um, I would never, me personally, I would never ever come near this. It's okay. like me and Chai Karak. Did we talk about chai karak? We did. Yeah, we yeah, did. yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm not doing chai some karak. sort of custody thing, but I've no okay. idea what it's called. Close. Yeah, but n yeah, no idea what you'd call it. But yeah. Okay. It's, it's not called. Too bad. It's called a creme brulee. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Did you uh, know that? Yeah. Oh, okay. Creme okay. Brulee. Have you had it before? Uh, I haven't. No. No. Yeah. So let's put let's put it here. Me and you are quite alike in okay. that sense. That cool. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't like yeah. creme brulees. Okay. Are we ready for the fourth and final one? This is the final one. Yeah. Right? This is okay. the final one. Is this like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that really helps. I've got a blindfold on, you're laughing. Oh <laughs> my God, this is bad. <laughs> I can't, I can't. I'm going to have to give you another, oh my Lord. You might like this. You might, yeah. It just depends on so your So that means you might like it as well. I wouldn't, again, this is, the, but I, again, I'm very weird when it comes to food. Okay. Yeah. But I would never, ever come near this. All right, here, where's your hand again? Okay, is this a spoon thing? Yeah, it's a spoon thing. Yeah, and keep your hand underneath okay. under, just in case. Yeah, and then let's go. It's the last one, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you okay? Oh, that's not nice. <laughs> that's not nice. That's not nice. Who is it? It's not nice. <laughs> that is not nice. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. Again, this is not this is not my choice yeah. at all. Um, are you not going to finish it? No, I'm not no. going to finish it. No, I'm not going to finish it at all. Okay. What was that? <laughs> it was a a, a, a sardine oh. in uh, in tomato uh, in tomato. I don't know puree or something okay. like that. No, that wasn't but nice. You can take your you can take a blind off, uh, blindfold off now. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. That was brilliant. Oh. That was brilliant. That was brilliant. That was brilliant. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, I'm like a fish. Water's not going to get rid of the sun. You're a vault of that. Gosh, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Mm. Um, cool. How are you? You're okay? I'm good, I'm good. Yeah? yeah I'll survive. Okay, cool. Well, yeah. Don't worry, we do have uh, uh, um, uh, a nice uh, dinner for you, hopefully, after, after the show. So, to take away your taste buds from all of that. And it's not full of um, pickled onion, sardines, sardines, sardines creme, creme brulee. And what was yeah, the other one? Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> what was it? So, uh, pickled onion. Pickled onion. Pickled onion. So yeah, look. Again, apologies for 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 the um, for the food stuff. Cool. Just in case, we're we're, we're, we're good though. Yeah. We're Again, good, good. me and you, we're yeah. good. But the the producers that I I had nothing to do with it. Okay, cool. Um, you're you're quite the uh, the adventure seeker, are you? In some respects, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. So we, yeah. We, we've got a again. Um, what was through that experience? So we went to Dubai and my uh, wife wanted to do a skydive, right? Yeah. And I was like, this was, this was just before I left my clinic. And so for me, this was like the jump to the new chapter of my oh, life. Wow, okay. So, so there's a lot of symbolism behind it. Yeah, this. yeah, just, okay. yeah. So there's, <laughs> yeah, so there's a vlog on, on YouTube and this was kind of signifying the, you know, jumping out of the old okay. and getting into the new. All right. Yeah. All right, fantastic. Okay. And, and you're quite the family man, man as well? As in, you're yeah. always there, you guys do loads of activities. How's, how's it like, cause you, you, say you mentioned you've got Oase. Yeah, so I've got Oase, and then there's my daughter, Amira, who's a year younger. So I've oh, got an 18-year-old, 17-year-old, and a 12-year-old. 18-year-old and a 17-year-old? Yeah, and a 12-year-old, yeah. How is that? Because I've got, alhamdulillah, the exact same thing, yeah. but minus 13 yeah. years. No, it's cool. It's cool. For, you know, for me, I want them to be able to 
look at me and see that, you know, anything's possible. Mm. Yeah, so I work like crazy at the moment, like the 15, 16 hours a day, right? Seven days a week, but it's for a reason. Mm. And I want them to see that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And are they, are they, um, do you think the, 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 there's a big, big shoes to fill or are they taking their own path? No, no, no. I don't want that. I don't want there to be any shoes to fill. I just okay. want them to be able to do what they want to do and be the best at what they do. That's it. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Top three memories? Not, not, not children related, but top three memories in general? Top three memories. Uh, meeting my wife, leaving dentistry and the first time I realised how powerful I was in business. Okay. Yeah. When yeah. did you realise that? I realised that when I was in a room with, with my coaches and they put me on the spot and they made me realise how powerful I am where, um, where the early journey was where I was teaching people how to, sp how to speak and how to sell. And I didn't realise how good I was, but three people in the room already bought into me, even when I hadn't designed anything, because they said, we want, to be, we want to do what you do. And the price point was huge, and I never believed I could close at that level. And it was just like, wow. And for me, that was a turning point. Mm. I was like, boom. Yeah. And that was, a, okay, and so that was a turning point in terms Massive of you being able point. to believe in yourself. Believe in you me. Could close that sound yeah, level. believe in <coughs> me of, of, of what I was capable of. Who was your biggest inspiration? Biggest inspiration. There's not, probably not one person, but I think the biggest thing which inspired me was, you know, the life my dad lived and when he passed away. That was my biggest inspiration. I think, you know, I want to be like that one day, like I want to die happy. That was a huge inspiration. Uh, Tony Robbins, I've been a huge inspiration in my life, massive. So I've been following What's his name, Tony? Robbins. Robbins. Yeah, so massive US, you know, uh, life coach, empowerment coach. Been following him since I was like eight years old. Yeah, and then there's some people, a few people within the community who I've really looked up to. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, what's next for Mahmoud? For me, it's for, for me it's growing the business. For me, it's uh, impacting more people. Uh, each and every person who comes into my circle it means I can change their life. I want to change as many lives as possible. That's it. And tell us a bit more about, I guess, the, the, the Reignite program. How does people enroll? What's it about? How do we find you? So um, you can just. Um, Google me, go into Instagram, whatever, everything's on there. Um, it's, it's a closed system in a way that I only allow people in who I feel will benefit me right. and, and people who I feel are the right people for the circle. I don't want people here who just want to make a lot of money. They'll make a lot of money through the program anyway, but I want people in who actually want to make a difference on this earth. So for me right now, while it's the size it is, I can manage whoever comes in. So you can't just go click somewhere and buy. You've got to come through me, you've got to through one of my team. And only when you're vetted, then you come in. So yeah, so it's, it's a bit of a closed circle, but you know, if it's a place you want to be, you can be there. And it's a place where you come to, to just, you know, find the real you, yeah, and to find the real version of you. Okay, so it's, it's um, you'd have to kind of almost qualify. Yeah, yeah, <coughs> I qualify everyone who comes into the circle, everyone who comes into the circle. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. And on that note, I guess in terms of last words of inspiration for, for already it's been inspiring, but any last words that you can think of that, that could be inspirational for our audience? You know, truthfully, right, we only live once. And when you speak to a lot of people on their deathbed, the biggest regret they have is, is I wish I'd led a life on my terms, a life true to me, a life not governed by others' expectation of me. And a lot of us, we live our life based on other people's expectation of us what our mum, what our dad, what our wife, what our kids may say of us. And we don't do things because we're worried about what they're gonna say about us. And that holds us back. And there's gonna come a day, and I really believe this, when we'll turn back and we'll regret, and we'll say, I wish I'd done this, but because I was worried about this person, I never. It's gonna to be too late then. And I'll really examine our lives right now and see who is it that's holding you back. And it may be someone very close to you. It's not they're holding you back, but in your mind, you know, you're worried about their opinion. And for me, parting words are break that, right? One life, no one's coming back, that's it. And I truly also believe that, you know, when we die, you know, we'll be questioned like we will, but we'll also be questioned about why didn't you live the life I gave you to live? Yeah. That, you know, you'll see probably two movies, one will, one will be the life you had, one will be the life you could have had. And about how close can we get those two? And that drives me a lot. It's like, I want those movies to be as close as possible. Yeah. Okay. That's it. All right, brilliant. 
Look, on that note, it's been such a fascinating discussion. Thank you for having Honestly, me. Thank you so much, honestly, for, for your time. Thank you for having for me. For the inspiration. Thank you. Thank you. Um, really, really enjoyed having you on the show. Apologies once again for the food. The food. <laughs> um, we will, inshallah, look after you better uh, after, after the show. Um, please, ladies and gentlemen, a very, very warm reception for um, Dr. Mahmoud Mawzi. Thank you so much. <laughs> on that note, Ladies and gentlemen, dear viewers of In Africa TV watching the Late Night Show, as I mentioned before and as I'll mention again, the guests that we choose, um, we've s purposely selected people that have changed lives, will change life, and inshallah will have some sort of impact on your life as well. So please do stay tuned to, to these shows. Uh, I'm sure you're going to enjoy it. Inshallah, we'll see you next time. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Imam Hussein TV3 wants to improve their content to ensure that we meet our goal which is to encourage, inform and educate the Shia around the world about the teachings from the Holy Household, the Ahlul Bayt. For us to do this, we need your help. Complete our survey and tell us which programs you like, what you'd like to see more of and what we could do better. The survey takes less than a minute but you could be within a chance to win a ring made from the marble from the holy shrine of Imam Hussein Alayhi Salam. Imam Hussein TV3, your gateway to Karbala.